Yeah, no problem. Um, how's the um, how's the week been? Is it nice uh, to walk in the shop in winter? <laughs> yeah, no. Yesterday, um, yesterday it came early, but it was uh, a lot of fun. So um, busy week trying to get everything out to the West Coast early, and then uh, hopefully once we get everything shipped out, we can enjoy it again for a day or two and get back after it. All right. Well, we're going to roll straight into questions so we can make sure we are able to maximize your time and to kick us off. We're going to start with Dustin Long. Go ahead, Dustin. Thank you, Rudy. You got a couple questions. And one, I'm just curious, can you give me a, a sense of perspective? If you if you were a driver who'd gone straight from the truck series and won in their third race in cup, I think everybody would just be beside themselves. And I think uh, with what you've done, with even with your experience, can you give me a sense of perspective of just what kind of a jump that is? even from a well-established truck operation to a cup operation and, and the things, I mean, I know at the end of the day, cars are going around in circles and you still got to make pit calls, but I'm guessing there's probably a big night and day difference from where you were at to what you are at now, just because of the different level. Can you give me a sense of that, please? Yeah, no, um, definitely. It's, 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 it's a totally different amount of people, right? I mean, we have 10 times the amount of people, literally from 60 to 600. Um, people that you know you're trying to are trying to help you win you know in, in in both cases but so I managed a much smaller amount of people directly on my team you know in the truck series so um, and you, so you you know you only have so much time to to work on the, the the truck compared to the car so the details are all just different so um, but I mean overall the nuts and bolts are really the fact that you need to lead a team as crew chief and and make pit calls, like you said, and and um, and and really interact with the driver the right way. So yeah, it's 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 a big it's a big jump for sure. It's hard. It's it's definitely not easy. I'm not trying to underplay that, but um, the fact that we had we had good cars, we had a good team. I didn't build a team. I came into a team, so I'm pretty lucky. Um, William was ready to go. Um, we knew he's a good driver. He just needed some experience, and uh, I think we're uh, ready to contend more often. I also wanted to get your uh, perspective on certainly uh, a lot of times when crew chief changes are made in this era, it, it goes to an engineer. And certainly we're in a period right now where not as many teams are bringing engineers to the track. I mean, obviously the engineers still provide valuable input, but they're not now doing that managing at track. Does this, as we see maybe more changes down the road for the short term, will this lead to, and with maybe your potential, with your success, uh, maybe cup operations looking more to bring crew chiefs straight out of a truck series or an Xfinity series uh, because they've got more of that management um, that, that maybe the engineer doesn't have because they're not going on the road uh, as much these days. Yeah, it, it could be, but I, I still think you need the engineering background. I mean, I, I'm a mechanical engineer. I started out as a, as a race engineer for, for quite a while. So um, I have that background, not, not quite nearly as good as, as my engineers are on my team, but um, you know, and then you, you see a lot of, um, you know, a lot of teams that take their cup race engineers, they send them to Xfinity, they, they do well, and they move back up, you know, um, Adam Stevens, Chris Gabehart, Greg Ives, all, all those, you know, they're, they're perfect examples of that. So they get that management experiment, uh, experience, like you said, in, in a lower level, um, you get to call people in and out of the pit boxes. There's a lot of little things that you don't get to do, um, as a, as a race engineer that, you know, it has to do with not just making the car fast, but managing the whole weekend. Thank you. Okay. Our next question is going to come from Jordan Bianchi. Go ahead, Jordan. Hey, Rudy. Appreciate your time. Question. Um, what kind of advice, what kind of feedback have you gotten from Chad Canals in making this transition? Yeah. I mean, I work with Chad every day, you know, his, his office right next to mine. We're in meetings every day. So, um, you know, he, he, he leads our company, you know, from a competition standpoint. So, um, definitely, you know, take his input all the time. And then, you know, just the fact that he was the leader of this team, he comes and checks in with his guys, his old guys, you know, and, and just make sure that everything's going well. He's got, he's got a lot of, as he says, we got a lot of blood in the 24 currently because the guys he hired guys, guys that he's helped train. And, um, so it's, uh, definitely use him up a lot. Has Chad been kind of hands off and letting you come in and kind of do manage things on how you want it to, or does he still have a voice in the process? No, I mean, it's when, when I ask for help or, or if, if he, you know, if he saw I needed to do something better, he'll say something, but definitely, um, you know, kind of, kind of let me go on my own as I needed to. Um, but just, uh, 
I, I'm I'm always up for suggestions and talking and asking. So um, um I, I try to take as much input from somebody um, as I can. Okay, our next question is going to come from Mark Guerra with PRN. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, thank you. I've got a couple of quick questions, Rudy. First off, congratulations. And sort of following up with Dustin's question, you know, coming from Kyle Busch Motorsports over to Hendrick, is it a little bit overwhelming to have all to have all these resources to work with? Yeah, the the first month was uh, definitely. Yeah, I would say the first week uh, really was was a really eye opening. You know, I really haven't spent much time here. Period. So I mean, we have a camp that's going to have a building. Um, so and and then you've got different. You know, different so many different managers that are that are so intelligent and so experienced that to lean on so um that was it's definitely different you know i was kind of the um the lead at, at kbm and used toyota and some other people to help me but you know this, this is this is so much more um resources at this level so um i had to take it take a step and and try to figure out who my go-to's would be um who, who my go-to's at chevrolet are who my go-to's are here who to talk to for this that and uh, over the first few months, you just kind of kind of found that and everybody's been super helpful in, in a different way. So um, it's been great. And my other question is, I, I was fascinated by your comment the other night after the win about like, OK, we're going to spend the next, you know, 20 odd races becoming a championship title contender. And, and that's what we're going to do. You just kind of was very matter of fact, matter of fact about that. Do you really believe this team has all in place? except the experience of consistently winning to be a title contender. Yeah, no, I mean, that's what we're going to find out and definitely, definitely figure, you know, that we have, we have the race cars, we have the engines, we have the people um, and, and we're going to put ourselves through the rigors to, to become a week in and week out contender. Like, like you see all these, you know, the four car and the, you know, the 18 car, the 11 car, the 19, the, those, you know, um, the nine car clearly uh, last year, you see all those, every single week a contender and you're surprised when they run 12th you know and that's that's what we have to be so um sometimes that takes training you know through you know through just putting yourself through the rigors of the season you know and myself included in a different series so um, that's how i've always approached um to how to win a championship with a, with lots of different rookie drivers and that's how i've taken the approach if you have success early you go and you uh, you go work on how to be a champion, and then when you have time to perform, you hopefully are good enough. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. Okay, our next question is going to come from Greg Engel. Go ahead, Greg. Hey, Chief. Um, congratulations. Obviously, there, um, Kyle and 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 Larson and um, a couple of guys are racing in the modified race the week before Bristol. Do you think that's a good idea? And would you would you encourage William to try that just to get the experience? So with, with the eight or so years um, experience at, at the Eldora dirt track, um, what I know is that the, the tire we race on and the stock car, the truck, car, whatever, is nothing like anything else. Um, it handles really, really poorly. They're really, really slow. The tire doesn't have a ton of grip, you know, so – um, any kind of experience in different types of forms of racing doesn't suit really, really help when it comes to, uh, getting better at, um, at a cup car around, around Bristol, I don't think, but, um, obviously there's, there's things to gain from, uh, just knowing what the track's like and what the track does and being there and seeing it and the visuals. And then, you know, of course, you know, Larson's going to run something. It's, he's going to go win, right? You know, that's just, uh, it, it's just fun for him. He can, he can hop out and do that. And it, it never hurts when you're, when you're that good at, at dirt to do stuff like that. And how was it, um, you came from outside of the organization to Hendrick and, but how was it to, to come in Monday as a winning cup crew chief to walk in that building? Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. You know, I started, started and walked through each building and, and uh, thanked everybody, you know, and, and told them good job and congrats and, um, and, and just hope to be able to do that more often. Thanks, Kyle. Appreciate it. Yep. Okay, our next question will come from Daniel McFadden. Go ahead, Daniel. Hey, Rudy. Um, I, I was wondering, what are your, like, earliest memories related uh, to NASCAR? And um, g given, like, how long you were in the truck series, when you first started out down this path career-wise, what did you view as – 
being your ultimate like career goal in your mind? Yeah. So, I mean, I was a NASCAR fan as a, as a young kid, you know, um, I think I was at a race, you know, NASCAR race a couple years old. And then it was the thing for my dad and I, like it would be my birthday present. We go to a race a year. And so definitely have uh, been a race fan for life, you know, and then um, you, you grow up and uh, I worked in a salvage yard um, with my family and realized that that was pretty hard work. And I wanted to get a degree and try to not have to work that hard every day. Um, so led me to mechanical engineering, went down trying to get into racing. And, um, and and you always have a goal of being a cup crew chief. That's it. You know, you want to be, want to be checking out, you know, and then uh, different paths and different jobs and um, climates of just the, uh, you know, how the, how NASCAR has gone up and down in the past 15 years has been pretty volatile. So you, you have really good jobs and you think you're on your way up and then that race team is not in business anymore and you have to go find another job and, you know, and you have to keep, keep working, working and working. So, um, you know, this, this was uh, pretty satisfying to get this kind of opportunity and, and then be able to succeed, you know, so far, you know, we have bigger, I have bigger goals. So we'll uh, hopefully we can succeed at those later on in the year. Thank you. Okay. Our next question will come from Lewis Torres. Go ahead, Lewis. Thank you, Amanda. Question is kind of similar to what you said on Sunday regarding making the huge gamble to go from KVM to Henry. How sweet is it to win at a, at a team, especially the car number that has so much backstory with the 24, like with the guys of Ray Abraham and Chad Knauss to win with Gordon and Byron, like you did with the latter this Sunday? Yeah, no, it's special. You know, it's a, it's a historic number. HMS is a historic place. Um, you know, this the great sponsors um, and uh, just to be able to succeed is, is amazing, you know, so definitely took a chance to be able to come over here and try to try to prove to myself, most importantly, and uh, that I could do it and and to have, you know, a win early is, is pretty awesome. And a quick follow up going going to Vegas right now was completely different from Homestead. Uh, what is kind of like the key for Byron to do well at that track? Yeah, so this this Vegas race especially is kind of different. It's cooler temperatures, and um, you know we have to with this 550 package. There's some drafting, and and definitely have to to weigh the drag versus downforce. And um, so we're trying to get that figured out where we have enough speed in the car, but also have you know the handling, um, and especially the restarts. You know the restarts at Las Vegas are as intense as anywhere. You know, so if you go back to the races, there's a lot of a lot of side draft and side by side pushing wrecks early on eight early and late in the, on the restart. So um, you know, just gonna see how that goes. Thank you. Okay, our next question is gonna come from Marty at RSN Trackside. Go ahead, Marty. Thanks, Amanda. Rudy, I hope you're well. Congratulations on your your first win Sunday. I know you're new to the Hendrick Motorsports organization, and I know with COVID-19 being a thing, but I'm curious on the celebrations. Uh, does Hendrick still do the victory bell celebrations? And if so, um, what's it going to be like to ring that bell for the first time? Yeah, we haven't, I guess I'm just finding out we haven't done it with COVID. So uh, all that stuff's new to me. Like you said, I haven't, I haven't been here for that. So um, we'll uh, hopefully we get through this stuff and we, we keep winning and be able to do it for real. That'd be pretty cool. All right, cool. Thank you. Okay, our next question will come from Stephen Toronto. Go ahead, Stephen. Rudy, Michael McDowell was talking with us about how there's been a, a freeze in parts and manufacturing over the past couple of years. And he was saying that it's really helped close the competitive gap in the top series because you're not constantly developing new parts and the, uh, you know, and the, and the gap is shrinking. Uh, as a crew chief, can you explain how the lack of, research and development compared to the past couple of years has changed your job and uh, how do you think it's contributed to the parity that we've seen early on seen early on yeah no um it's definitely has a big effect you know you, you, we have uh, way less wind tunnel time than we've ever had before um every team has the same amount of wind tunnel time so they're probably getting uh you know even the the mid-tier teams or uh, they're getting more wind tunnel information than they have in the past. Um, 
just because it's a it's the, or they're getting the same amount as us, I would say probably. Um, but then the whole parts freeze, the chassis freeze, everything is very very limited. So they've been running the same parts. So your your notebook or your playbook or however you want to put it is is similar. You know, you don't have a a brand new chassis and you know, a brand new this or a brand new that to 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 guess at or hope your sim leads in the right direction. You have solid facts on this worked or that didn't work, and we're going to go in this direction or that direction. So. Um, you know, that that's in the past, it's helped as well. You know, the, the last few years before um, we went through this, you know, the new chassis, what they call the COT chassis at that point, the, the bodies templates had stayed the same for quite a while. And you saw some, um, a lot of parity in, in, in some of the wins at the mile and a half that you hadn't seen in a while. So um, I think it's, um, you know, history is repeating itself on some of that. If you keep things pretty stagnant when it comes to technology, there's only so many things you can work on. Um, we have we are detailing out as much as we can, but there's still a very very small amount of things that we can do it. So um, it's hard to hit a big home run and be ten seconds faster. So um, it's a big change. Gotcha. Thank you, Rudy. Okay, our next question will come from Anton with ASN Media. Go ahead, Anton. Thanks, Amanda. Good afternoon, Rudy. You've won with William Byron in the truck series before, and now you've won with him in the cup series. How does it feel to win again with him now in the biggest stage? Yeah, no, it's great. You know, um, the reason I came over here is, you know, to be able to work with William. I believe in him. He believed in me. Uh, we've kind of believed him since um, since day one in the trucks, and and it's fun to uh, to be able to realize, you know, I mean, it's our dreams as well, you know, I mean, not only our goals, but our dreams as well to be able to compete at this level and win and uh, and to be able to do it together when, when somebody believes in you like like he does in me and, and I do in him. It's uh, it's fun to be successful. Thanks. Wishing you all the best for this weekend. Thank you. All right. We're going to take our next question from Garrett with Gas and Go podcast. Go ahead, Garrett. Thanks, Amanda. Hey, Rudy, congrats on the big win. You mentioned HMS being uh, a campus compared to KBM being a, a building. So I'm wondering, have you had any funny, like, welcome to HMS stories since you've been there? Like, got couldn't find your car in the parking lot, got lost in the halls or something? I get lost in the halls, yeah, pretty much every building. I mean, I got lost coming up to this conference room. So um, definitely, uh, definitely way different there than trying to figure out where to be at. So, um you know, I, I know my area pretty well, but that's about it. <laughs> cool. Well, congrats again, man. Thanks for the time. Thanks. All right, Rudy, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it, especially after you spent um, so much time with us on Sunday night. So congratulations again on the win, and we, we wish you the best of luck this weekend in Las Vegas. All right. Thanks, Amanda.